Hi, everyone, and welcome to this installment of California Employment News, the new series from Weintraub's Employment Group. I'm Ryan Abernethy, and I'm here today with Lucas Clary, and we're both attorneys in the employment team here at Weintraub. Uh, today, we're going to be covering the California Family Rights Act, or the CFRA. We'll be going over the type of leave benefits that the CFRA requires employers to provide, as well as some recent changes to the CFRA that have significantly expanded its scope, as well as the number of employers that now must comply with it. Lucas, why don't you provide us with some foundational information about the CFRA, as well as some of these changes employers should be aware of. Thanks, Ryan. So the CFRA is the California counterpart to the more well-known federal law, the Family and Medical Leave Act, or FMLA. Now, the ins and outs of FMLA and CFRA leave law could take hours to discuss, maybe even days. But today, we'll just present you with a real short overview of the key components of it and recent changes to the CFRA. Now, both of these bodies of law deal with job-protected unpaid leaves of absence for employees who are required to miss work due to either their own serious health condition or to care for a family member with a serious health condition, to bond with a newborn child, or for certain kinds of qualifying exigencies related to military leave. While they've always had some key distinction, they largely function similarly. Under both, qualifying employees get up to 12 weeks of unpaid job-protected leave within a 12-month period, provided they have worked for the employer for at least 12 months and worked at least 1,250 hours in the preceding 12 months. Uh, now, both laws used to have the same minimum employee threshold before employers are subject to them, uh, and this is where things have changed recently. That threshold has historically been that the employee must work at a work site where there's at least 50 employees within a 75 mile radius, which is still the standard for that federal FMLA law. The CFRA has done away with that though. As of January 1, 2021, so we're more than a year into it now, the CFRA now applies to any employer who employs at least five employees. And there is no longer that 75 mile radius requirement. It's just five employees anywhere. What that means is that California employers with between five and 49 employees who previously were able to ignore this whole area of the law now have to comply with it. So Ryan, since so many new employers are subject to CFRA, what else can you tell us about its recent changes and how some of those changes might even impact larger employers as well? Certainly. Yeah, so as Lucas mentioned, the CFRA, it's always applied um, and you know permitted employees to take leave to care for their own serious health condition, as well as the health or serious health condition of a spouse, a registered domestic partner, a parent, or a child. Um, but the recent amendments to the CFRA include the addition of some additional um, covered family members. Um, it now covers uh, grandparents, grandchildren, and siblings. They're added to the list. Um, and apparently not wanting to leave anyone off the list, in the latest amendment a few months ago, the legislature even added parents-in-law as covered family members. Now, the CFRA leave requirements, uh, they're obviously gonna be a lot more difficult for smaller employers to accommodate um, with fewer personnel to shift around and to cover the absent employee. In addition, many small employers are still catching up with this new, these new obligations in the CFRA generally. Um, but a silver lining here with some of these changes is that for small employers at least, the new CFRA leave uh, amendment requires mediation through the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing Act first before the employer can, can even sue the employer. So if the employer and the employee request mediation, if either of them do, the employee can't pursue any civil litigation against uh, the employer until the mediation is fully complete. Um, in exchange, the employee statute of limitations on the claims are going to be told until the mediation is fi finalized. So with that, Lucas, uh, can employers, what can they do to get in compliance with all of these changes? Thanks, Ryan. I think the biggest key is to make sure employers' policies are up to date to reflect these changes. So if your handbooks or any other standalone policies that deal with leaves of absences do not deal with the CFRA, you're going to want to update those handbooks and policies to reflect that you're now a CFRA employee, employer, and that employees have rights under that area of the law. You're also going to want to make sure that management and human resources professionals who oversee any leave of absence requests are up to speed on this area of the law and what an employer's obligations are. For example, they should know that absent very limited circumstances, the employee's job must be held open to them while they are, while they are out on the leave and that they can re then return to the same job when, when the leave is over. Also, while CFRA leave is unpaid, employees may be able to receive state disability or paid family leave benefits 
to overcome some of that loss of play, pay. Employees may also use any vacation, sick, or PTO time that they have available. Depending on the circumstances, employers might also be able to require that employees exhaust those other forms of paid leave while they're out on CFRA leave. Employers must also maintain employees' health benefits while they're out on leave, um, although employees are still subject to the premium pay, which can be a little bit tricky if they're not earning wages in a paycheck. How do you deduct that? That's something you have to work out with the employee. And because of the complexity of navigating all of this stuff, I strongly recommend that employers work with legal counsel when they have an employee requesting a possible CFRA leave, particularly if you're an employer who hasn't dealt with this area of the law before. Great. Thank you, Lucas. And thank you all again for joining us on this episode of California Employment News. Viewers can find more episodes like this on the Weintraub uh, YouTube channel or on the lelawblog.com. And always feel free to like and subscribe so you can stay on top of ongoing legal developments. Thank you.